But today we want to focus on the secret of our victory. The secret of our victory. See, here's what you just saw. For those of you unfamiliar with that movie, that's that great movie, Remember the Titans. And in that movie, here's the situation. They were down in the waning seconds of the game, and the Titans needed to score to win the championship. Ned Yost, Will Patton, tells his head coach, Herman Boone, who's played by Denzel Washington, he says, we've got to throw something at them, but they don't know what to do. He says, we've got to throw something at the opposing team, but we've got to do something that they are not ready for. Is anybody here? We've got to throw something that they are not ready for. So what does Denzel do? He puts the former starting quarterback, who they call Rev, who's already missed nearly the entire season because he's had an injury. He hadn't been able to play for months. Nobody is expecting him on the field. He then runs a reverse from the team's own 25-yard line with the actual starting quarterback, who they call Sunshine, as the lead blocker. Nobody expected the lead quarterback to be blocking and the injured quarterback to be running the play. Run, Rev runs 75 yards untouched to the end zone. The Titans win. Go down in the annals of history of one of the greatest high school basketball, high school football games in history. The bottom line is, church, today is that if you're going to see the victory, if you are going to have the victory, the enemy cannot see you coming. You've got to find a play he is not expecting. That is why the scriptures tell us that the devil only tempts us in common ways. In 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13, he says, There hath no temptation taken you, but that but such as is common to man. But God will is God is faithful, and he will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able. But will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you are able to bear it. Now, see, the word uses, the, the scripture uses the word common here because common here means obvious or likely to succeed based on our human nature. Satan is only going to tempt us in things that he knows will, 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 will affect us. This is why Satan believes he will always succeed because these temptations, his temptations are designed to influence our human, humanness. Our flesh. What the psalmist is telling us today, however, what we read is that we have a secret that will always assure us of God's victory in our lives. As we studied over the last two lessons, yes, the spirit of victory is important. The story of victory are indications, of course, both that of our, our ability to triumph over the enemy. However, both of them depend on the secret of victory. If you don't have a secret, you better have a secret or the enemy will be able to take advantage. It is the secret of victory that gave Davis, David the confidence to say with total conviction in the seventh verse of this wonderful psalm, the Lord shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment. You see, <laughs> David describes five secrets we're going to talk about today. And when we understand who God is, We can never forget these five areas and ponder them deep in our hearts. When we do this church, 
and not become forgetful hearers. You remember James tells us in James 1 and verse 25. He says, whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, that's the word of God, and continueth therein. Oh, I wish I had some people this morning that want to stay in the word of God. We'll hit it for a little while. We'll look at it when things are not going our way. We play around with the word, but we don't continue therein. And don't tell me you don't have time. Amen. Anybody that's never sat on a couch and binge watch a show. Amen. Amen. If you've never done that, amen, you can keep your seat. Probably most of us would be standing. Amen. Hour after hour after hour after hour on that, on that couch watching that television. Don't tell me you ain't got time to be in your word. You have to continue therein and not be a forgetful hearer. Amen. But a doer of the work. Here's what the Bible says. This type of person, this type of person, somebody say this type. This type of person will be blessed in their deeds. That's who God blesses. You wonder why the blessings of the Lord aren't being evident in your life. Well, you got to stick with it. We've given up on it. We stopped trusting God. Amen. It became hard. Oh, praise God. But we've got to recognize five things. Number one today, we have to remember, here's the first secret. God is righteous. We serve a God of righteousness. Now, look at verse 8 of Psalm 9. He says, and he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. Why is this our first secret? Why? It seems like it should be patently obvious. Uh, our God is righteous and can never do anything but what is right. But here's the point. The enemy loves to tempt us in this area, church. And unless you remain faithful to the word and not be forgetful in your reading and not be a forgetful hearer of what you've heard God say, his temptations will work on us especially when you're faced with difficulties or unfair situations. Soon as a difficulty shows up, soon as your feelings get hurt, we forget that God is righteous and can't do wrong and will never do you wrong. Amen. We try to take things into our own hands. We start complaining to the unsaved as if they can help us. Amen. You see, this was more than an academic proposition for David, more than just a profession of his lips. Amen. He had proved God in so many situations and under so many conditions and had always seen God's, God vindicate his righteous cause. And he had learned to absolutely trust in God's righteousness. Absolutely trust in God's righteousness. God was going to make it right. When he was running from Saul, he never did a thing to Saul. Completely unfair. A man trying to take his life for no reason whatsoever. Amen. And David still held on and remembered that God would vindicate him. That God would have the last word from the depths of his soul. David counted on God to always be righteous. He knew he had nothing to fear. And that God would, what does it say here in verse 8? Minister judgment to the people in uprightness. He would minister judgment to the people in uprightness. He will take care. He will handle them. He will do it his way in uprightness. It's going to happen according to God's time, 
according to God's way, according to God's plan. Amen. We just need to get out the way and let the Lord handle his business. Amen. You notice that, you notice here that David did not depend on his own righteousness. He knew that it was the righteousness of God that was the basis of all victory. The righteousness of God. See, so the next time something happens, just remember the first secret. God is righteous. Amen. Don't matter what the enemy tries to let you think. God is righteous. He's going to make sure it is handled according to his righteousness. Number two, the Lord God is a God of refuge. He's a God of refuge. Look at verse 9 of Psalm 9. It says, the Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed a refuge in times of trouble. Verse 10 says, And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Amen. Let me ask you this morning, what is your refuge? Where is your refuge? Who is your refuge? In whom do you place your trust? Where do you run when things get tough? For many people, their refuge is usually something or someone found in this world. For some people, their refuge may be some special place or a thing they enjoy doing. Still, for others, it may be a special person or a friend. Nothing wrong with any of that. And as good as some of these things may be, None of them has the guarantee of absolute consistency, and none of them has eternal value. See, in Psalm 46, we sing it around here quite often. David boldly proclaimed, he said in verse 1 and 2, God is my refuge, and God is my strength, a very present help. In trouble. Therefore, will we not fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea? How do you know where your refuge is? How do you know where it is? It's where you run when there's trouble. And David proved time and time and time again in Proverbs 18 and 10. That the Lord, our God, is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is, present continuous, is safe. Amen. Amen. We're not safe some of the time. We're not safe, amen, when uh, we feel as though things are going our way. Amen. We're safe all the time. See, that's a secret you got to hang on to. Amen. You might get it. It might be difficult right now. You might not feel as though things are going your way right now. Maybe you are being uh, bombarded on every side, but you've got to learn uh, that God is your refuge and your strength. Uh, and you've got to run to the Lord and hang on to what he says. Uh, amen. Uh, and know that he is righteous and you is safe. Amen. How do you run to the Lord? Get in the word of God and not be a forgetful hearer. Get in the word of God and remember his goodness towards you. Remember that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. These aren't pipe dreams. I'm not preaching like this, amen, amen, for my health. Amen. It's because I know it to be true for myself. Oh, yes. Don't. Doubt the reality of God's sovereignty, of God's ability. This is not a fantasy church. This is not a fairy tale. Amen. And some people, amen, the most they do with God is dress up and come to church on Sunday. And that's a good thing. Keep doing it. But if that's all you got, I'm sorry, you're not living in victory. If that's all you got, you're not living in victory. Amen. Where is your prayer life? 
Where is your time of study? Where is your time in the word of God? Where is your time of personal praise and offering unto God? Where is your time of sacrifice? Are you walking in victory? Glory to God. Amen. I thank God for the fellowship of the body of Christ. Necessary, amen, must happen. Without it, we cannot have the victory of God. But recognize that you've got. Y'all aren't talking to me right now. Amen. Amen, because I am going to preach. Amen. Amen. No, you ain't going to mess up this. I'm getting my Jesus today. Huh? But you get out the building. You get out from around the saints. Huh? That's when all hell breaks loose. Let me tell you something. You better understand this is not a fantasy. You better understand that this is not, amen, a fairy tale. You better understand that the enemy is not coming to hurt you. He's coming to destroy you. He wants to take you out. Glory to God. Remember that God is your refuge. Number three, remember that God is a God of remembering. That's the third secret today. Remember that God is a God of remembrance. What are you saying, Pastor? Look at verse 11 of Psalm 9. It says, sing praises to the Lord. Oh, I'll say that again. Sing praises to the Lord in church. Hmm. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, that's a Paul McKenzie version. The PMV. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but that ain't in, no, sing praises to the Lord, which dwelleth in Zion, declare among the people his doings, when he maketh inquisition for blood, listen, when he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them, who, those that praise him? He is going to be looking, amen, for those who have desired to praise him. Those are the ones he's fighting for. He says, he forgetteth not the cry of the humble. The true power of these verses are in their simple instruction. And here it is. Don't lose your song in times of trouble. Don't lose your song in times of trouble. Amen. You know, the enemy got a lot of music out there. Oh, yes, he does. You know, I, I thought it was interesting. We were talking about that in Sunday school. The uh, elder started mentioning it uh, in his, it, you know, as we were worshiping. I, I mean, there's something about, amen, the world's music. Amen. That can get us going. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And although there's not, again, with, you, with, with, it, with, it, with proper maturity, there's nothing wrong with enjoying certain things in the world. But the reality of it is, amen, there's no victory in any of that music. Oh, you might be able to bust the move. I'm, that showed my age, I know. That told my age right there. Amen. You might be able to dance, you might be able to enjoy yourself, clap your hands a little bit, stomp your feet, but at the end of the day, there is nothing eternal to be found in any of it. Amen. Now, that doesn't make it wrong or evil. It means you better put it in perspective and to make sure you have it in priority. Have you forgotten your song? What am I talking about? But I know when I got saved, there was some music that brought me to the throne of grace. And the other day, I went through and I was creating a playlist of some music. And I started going back 20 years, 30 years to music that had me on my knees and putting that stuff in. And, I, and it was amazing. Oh, that I had forgotten some of my songs. Oh, y'all here? And I was like, oh my gosh, yes. I remember. And as soon as that, as one, as something would play, I remember where I was like yesterday. 
and what God was working out in me uh, as though it was yesterday. Amen. And what God was delivering me from uh, as if it were yesterday. Amen. Because uh, when you forget your song, that's a secret right there. Amen. The enemy don't want you to know. Amen. He wants you to get so filled uh, with the world uh, and the things of the world. Uh, and it's so easy today, isn't it? Uh, amen. To have all of this stuff uh, at your fingertips. Uh, but listen, don't forget your song. Don't lose it in times of trouble. Sing praises unto the Lord. If you always want to have the victory, amen, then never forget your song. I remember I was speaking to somebody once and they were saying, if the house was burning down, And you had to grab some music to take with you. What would you take? I thought about it. I said, I know what I would take. Started listing some stuff. Got to have this. Got to have that. This has got got to have that. And I thought about it. Didn't have an answer for him at the time. Didn't have an answer for him at the time. But I realized, because I, I, I was thinking, what would I really take? What would I, what would I really want if everything else was gone? And I could only listen to this. What would it be? And it quickly came to me, re recognized that it couldn't be anything of the world. There's nothing eternal in it. I don't care how nice it is. I don't care how much I like it. I don't care how good the tune is. I don't care how good, I don't, I don't care how good the jam, well, I just gave my age away again. Amen. It doesn't matter. There's nothing in it. There's nothing there of, eter of eternal value. But I remember, amen, amen, the words of certain songs as I'd sing them. Amen, how it would deliver my soul when I was struggling with, with sin, when I couldn't seem to get past certain things. Uh, there was music the Lord sent to my life to, what, refresh my spirit and refresh my soul. That's why I don't mind praising him today. Amen. Because I know how important it is. One of the subtle and effective tricks of the enemy is to convince us that God has forsaken us in times of trouble. This is why your song is so important. Because it was during those times of trouble that God made that song your song. And every believer ought to have some. Every, every believer ought to have, amen, music, amen, to worship the Lord by. To glorify God by music that if you listen to it, amen, you can't stop, you can't, you can't stop yourself from crying because it touches your spirit, amen. Music that brings you to the place where you recognize your own mortality, but yet the eternal home you have with Jesus. Listen, there must be something greater in your life when it comes to your praise. And God has given us the ability to praise him and to know that he is God. We have a neighbor that keeps bees. They have over 400,000 bees in their beehive. And the bees go all over the neighborhood all day long. Sometimes they can go as far as 40 miles away. Amen. Pollinating and getting nectar and all the things they do, and then they return to the hive every evening. And I was at their home yesterday buying some honey, and I was, the husband was talking to me about the bees and how they work. He says, it's an amazing thing. It says, he says, they go to a flower. He pointed to a flower, and he says, there's one of our bees right there, just busy at work. And he pointed to that flower, and he says, here's the thing about it. Nobody can understand it, but the flower gives off an electromagnetic charge. And when the bees come close to the flower, God has designed the bee to receive that charge. And the bee knows that that flower 
has nectar in it because of the charge. So the bee joins itself to the flower. However, if another bee had already been there, or if the flower had not developed, then the charge is gone. And it takes time for that charge to be redeveloped. So the bee will go to the flower and will look to see, is there anything in there? Does it have the charge? Is it receiving the charge from the flower to tell it, yes, there's something here? Because if not, it just goes to another flower. Amazing creatures, aren't they? More amazing God. You know, God can tell if you've got a praise in you. God can tell if there's a praise in you. Amen. Amen. You know what? When he sends the enemy to you, glory to God. Amen. Listen to what I'm saying. When he sends the enemy to your life, amen, because remember, the enemy cannot touch you unless God allows it. Amen. No temptation can be taken you than such as is common, but God will with the temptation. You see, amen, when the enemy comes to you, he's sensing to find out, is there any praise in there? Are y'all listening to me? Now get this. Let this. He wants to see if there's any praise, because if there's no praise, He'll leave you alone. Oh, you thought I was going somewhere else with it, didn't you? If there's nothing for him to steal, why bother you? He only comes to do what? Steal. Kill. Just If there's nothing in there, what are you going to bother you for? People who the enemy ain't bothering ain't serving God. Oh, somebody. See, somebody told you wrong. You're trying to get the enemy to leave you alone. Oh, you better say, bring it on, man. Huh? Because your activity is an indication that I got something you want, but I got a secret. Amen. You ain't getting it. I'm giving off something that obviously... Amen. It's desirable for you. It's something that you can't have anymore. It's something you lost when you were kicked out of heaven. Amen. Something God took from you. Uh, took that praise. You can't praise God anymore. Amen. But I can glorify him uh, and I can praise him and you want to steal that from me. Uh, I'm here to tell you if you got a praise, uh, look out. The enemy wants you. But don't worry, he can't have you. But don't get it twisted and think that the fact that the enemy huh, is desiring to have you, huh, to sift you as wheat, come on, that that's a bad thing. Oh, no. Remember what Jesus told Peter? He says, he, the enemy wants you. He's desired to have you. He wants to sift you as wheat. But that's okay. You're going to be just fine. Because when you're converted, you will be able to strengthen your brethren. He didn't say, but don't worry, Peter. I'll keep that enemy from sifting you. I'll keep that enemy from bothering you. Man, you're going to walk through this life. You ain't ever going to see the enemy. You won't even have to deal with him. You're going to walk through him. Ain't nothing going to happen to you. You're just going to be a blessed child of God. No, he didn't. He said, you're going to have to get converted because the sifting is coming. Because I am building my church on your confession. Oh, y'all ain't hearing this. Huh? He won't be able to destroy anything I've done in your life. When the enemy comes against us, don't see it as though, oh, man, I must be in the wrong. Something must be going, oh, man, I can't believe this. I wish it was better. No, thank the Lord. Praise God. Amen. And hold on and say, listen, I got a song right now to give the Lord. Amen. The Lord is my refuge and the Lord is my strength. A very present help in trouble. Amen. I can sing unto the Lord a new song. Amen. Because God will remember the song 
of the humble. The cry of the humble. Number four, he's a God of redemption. He's a God of redemption. He's a God of redemption. In verse 13 and 14 of Psalm 9, here's what it says. It says, have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble, which I suffer of them. David was going through. He said, man, listen to this. Look at what I'm dealing with. Consider what I'm going through. I'm suffering of them. I'm not doing it. They are. They hate me. Thou that liftest me up from the gate, excuse me, thou that lifteth, liftest me up from the gates of death, that I may show forth all my praises, or my praise, in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in thy salvation. He's a God of redemption. What are we saying here? This is one of the most, truly the most powerful, one of the most powerful secrets of our victory as believers. Being able, and here it is, to stare down the devil, to stare down the enemy with the truth of how God, look at what David says in verse 13, how God lifted us up from the gates of death. What are we saying? Huh. What makes this so powerful, church? It's because every single Christian can tell the same story. Every Christian can tell the same story. Every believer can share how God delivered us from sin. How God brought us out, amen, of the trouble we were in. How God saved us from death. How God took us away, amen, from trouble. How God blessed us and turned our lives around. Every believer can share how God delivered us from sin, from death, from hell. In order that we could share our relationship with him and be with Christ one day in paradise. See, you've got to know you have the victory. Because God will not stop until his work of salvation is fully completed. That's what Paul said in Philippians 1 and verse 6. That's when he said, being confident of what? This very thing. That he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day that Jesus comes back. Until the day of Jesus Christ. He's a God of redemption. He redeemed us when he saved us. Redeemed us from the curse. Oh, we were in some stuff, weren't we? We were in some junk, weren't we? Oh, we were in problems, weren't we? Oh, yeah, everything on every side. We had made some mistakes. We had made some, we had, we had, we had kind of messed everything up. Amen. Now we needed help. Uh, amen. And God came and he lifted us up from the gates of death. Took us away from sin. That's the story. That's the secret. Why is this important? Because the enemy is going to try to get you to forget that. But see, the word of God tells me, don't ever forget the rock from which you were hewn and the pit from which you were digged. Amen? Don't forget where God brought you from, not one day, not one moment. Amen? Because if you do, you'll forget that, hey, he brought me out of that. He'll get me out of this. He took me away from that. He'll take care of this. This situation is hard, but that's okay. God knows what I need. Uh, amen. He's been there for me in the past. He'll be there with me right now. I know there are those that hate me and those that are trying to hurt me and those that don't want me to live and those that don't want me to, to, to have the victory of the Lord. But God will lift me up from the gates of death. That's my God. He's a God of redemption. He's a God of redemption. You never forget that. Oh, praise God. See, when you hold on to that kind of stuff, the enemy thinks, oh, yeah, I got him now. I got him on the ropes. Look at him. He's about to give up. He said, no, no, no. Uh-uh. My God, he saved me before. 
He's kept me this long. He told me he'd never leave me or forsake me. You know, guys, let me say this. I know we've got to go. I know it's time to go. But I have to say this. Anytime I look and see people who are failing in their Christian walk, anytime I look and I see individuals who are, are, are struggling and have turned back to things they know are no good, it's always because of one reason. One reason. They have refused the word of God. They have not desired to stay in the word of God. Because if you stay in the word of God, if you believe the word of God, if you'll not be a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, then my Bible says you will be successful in everything you do. I didn't say it was easy. Oh, I didn't say it was easy. Every single day. You got to get up with an attitude, amen, and understand that the battle is on, amen. Before, you, before your feet hit the ground, before your feet hit your floor, you better get, get it right in your head that the enemy, amen, is going to try to stifle the word in your life today. He's going to make sure, amen, if he can, that you don't read your Bible. He's going to try his best to make sure that you're not trusting what God says. He's going to bring your problems back to your face in such a way, amen, that you will, that you will believe there's no hope for you and God. But thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me, the glory and the lifter up of my head. Amen. Thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for me, the glory and the lifter up of my head. You see, when you remember this, remember he's a God of redemption. He's a God of redemption. Oh, you have to believe it. See, I, I, I don't know how else to, 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 to convince us that it's not our work. It's the Lord's work. But let's look at this. Let's look at this because it's the Lord. He has promised you. Somebody say he's promised me. He has promised you. Oh, and he's never broken a promise. And that's why we end with the fifth promise and the fifth secret, that he's a God of recompense. He's a God of redemption. He's brought us back, but he's a God of recompense. He knows how to pay back. You don't have to do it. Leave it to him. And I'm going to quickly go over a couple things in the remaining five verses of this psalm. Just very quickly look at it with me, please. In verse 15, he says, the heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made in the net which they hid is their own foot taken. Huh? Anybody ever tried to lay, lay a trap for you? Tried to mess you up? They got messed up behind their own mess? Huh? Ever seen that happen? You ever seen people that lay in wait and mess, tried to mess you up and had to come back to you for something else? Oh, yes. Our God delivers them into your hand. Anybody ever seen that happen? If I got any believers in here, I know somebody knows that because that's how God works. If you stay righteous during your trial, God will always bring your enemy back to you. Amen. He always does. Oh, because that's how God works. It says in verse 16, the Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. There it is. How do I know it's God? How do I know this is God? Because I know how God works. The wicked are snared by their own hands, right? Goes in verse 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell. All the nations that forget God. Everyone, verse 18 says, the last part of verse 18 says, the poor shall not perish forever. In verse 19, it says, arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. In verse 20, put them in fear, O Lord that the nations may know themselves to be only men. Wow. You know, the psalmist was so impressed with these words that the Lord gave him that in verse 16, at the end of verse 16, he uses two words I want to bring your attention to. The first one is Higayon. 
And the second word is selah. Many times we will see selah, and we don't really pay much attention to it. But it's a term that actually means to glorify God, just glorify God. But in this psalm, in this verse, we see the psalmist using another word. Hegeion. And here's what it means. It means literally stop everything you're doing and meditate on what you just heard. Meditate on the Lord. What is he saying? The Lord is known by his judgments which he executeth. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Not the wicked will be snared. Not one day God will deal with the wicked. No, when you try to work wickedness against the child of God from the very beginning of your work, you're snared. You can't, you can't, you can't make it. You can't succeed. And it says, he says, literally, hold on to these verses. He says, stop and meditate on it for a while. Meditate on it for a while. You see, what he's saying in these verses is what Paul reminds us of in Romans 12 and verse 19. And Paul appealing to the Christian, appealing to us and saying, dearly beloved, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. Let it go. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will recompense. I will repay, saith the Lord. I, I, I say it all the time, and, and, and I'm, I'm saying I, it's something that, as a believer, you have to learn. But you really need to let the Lord handle your enemy. You really do. In fact, when somebody is doing something that huh, they shouldn't be doing, they shouldn't be doing, you need to pray for them. You need to pray for them because you know a secret. Because you know a secret. You know that your God is a God. You know that your God is a God of remembrance. God is going to remember God is what people do. Remember children, what people do to His children. You know that. You don't have to. You don't. You don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to. You don't anything to them. Lead them. Do lead them. Be. Lead them. Be. And watch God. Watch God. When you try to tell the world this, they look at you as though you're a wimp, as though you're weak. Oh yes. Oh yes. There are things God put puts in our hands to handle. We understand that. But there's certain things sometimes you just have to leave it to God. And you better know how to distinguish the difference, how to know the difference. So today, church, as we look at God's ability to work in our lives, as we come to the end of this wonderful psalm, we've got five secrets, don't we? Ponder them in your heart. Don't ever let go of them. Remember that God is a God of righteousness. He can't but act right. He will always judge righteously. Remember that he is a refuge. Learn to run to him. Learn to run to him. I was speaking to somebody the other day, and it was kind of funny the way they were putting it, but you know what? It convicted me because I said, I wonder if I, act, if I do the same. They were dealing with a very difficult situation at work. And that situation had gotten so bad that he said, I just had to, I just had to run to my room and, 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 and get my Bible and, 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 and just, just start praying and saying, Lord, you make a way. Take care of it, Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to, I, I want to hurt somebody right now, but I'm just going to sit right here. And it was kind of funny at first, but then I, was, I got convicted because I know Paul McKenzie. Paul McKenzie will go and engage you. 
Yeah. Righteously engages. Because I'm right. No, I am. And you shouldn't have bothered me. Let's just be, let's just, let's be adults about it. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's work this out right now. See, that's me. But that's not God. See, that, that just causes trouble. That just brings problems. You know, I mean, we, you know, I, you know, you know what the Lord had to t- teach me? He had to, I, I'm talking about me. Y'all can do whatever you want to say about yourself. But you know what the Lord had to show me? Lord, Lord, I don't need you helping me fight any battles. Amen. Leave it to me. God is my refuge. Oh, he's my refuge. Oh, yes. He's a God of remembrance. Amen. He's a God of remembrance. He remembers. Amen. What he's done in our lives. Do you remember what he's done? And the best way to remember is with a song. Oh, do you have a song that's in your spirit of when God saved you, delivered you, blessed you, strengthened you? Do you have a song that you sing around, that we sing around here, amen, that when you start singing it, you just can't stop? And it just starts blessing you and blessing you and blessing you. Oh, my gosh. I remember I was singing a song one one day. We were were just, just, just song just came to my mind. I sing, and I, just before I knew it, I was weeping. Oh, my God. He's a God of redemption. He brought you out of the miry clay. He saved you, took you away from sin. Don't ever forget that. The enemy's going to try to make you think that where you are is where you're going to be. Huh? He's going to let you think that man has the power. But you know what? Man has some power. He don't have it all. Amen. God is a God of redemption. And lastly, God is a God of recompense. God will take care. God will pay back on our behalf. Just watch him do it. I been I believe I've got a few people in here that have seen it. Amen. You just had to leave it to God. You didn't have to be ugly. You didn't have to be passive aggressive. You didn't have to be, you know, you know how we can be being all nice, <laughs> right? When in our hearts we're like, mm-hmm. right? No, 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 no. We can genuinely love and leave them to God. And pray for them. Pray for them. Why? Because you know God's judgment is coming. That's a secret. You know it. God's judgment is coming. God will repay. That is something that we recognize and we are blessed by today. Amen. We know that if we continue to serve God, give him all that we are, trust him with all of our heart, lean not on our own understanding. In all our ways, if we will acknowledge him, He shall direct our paths. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's bow our heads this morning. Father God, we give you honor right now. We give you glory. We thank you. There is none like you. You are worthy of our worship, worthy of all grace, worthy, dear Father, of all that we are. There's none like you. And so we ask right now, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, dear Father, that you just continue to encourage our spirits. Thank you right now for your word. Thank you right now, dear Father, that we understand that we will always have the victory as long as we're willing to do it your way. We're asking right now, dear Father, in Jesus' name.